Welcome back for another episode of Simmering Simmons. Today we're going to get into some breakfast action. Actually, you can make this any time of day, really. But uh, it's Saturday morning, and we're getting into some huevos rancheros for you. So we're going to start off. I've got some avocado oil here. We're going to get it in the pan. All right, so we got some oil in here. I've got some uh, onions, chopped up onions. Take a look, yeah. We're going to get them in the pan. We want to caramelize these. We want to get all the sugar out of them, make them all nice and just coppery and yeah, you know, don't know how to do it. Get in there and do it. I'm going to need a little more oil than that though. This avocado oil is great. I don't think it really tastes like avocados. Let's see. It doesn't taste like avocados. But uh, it handles some high heat, you know. You can really get it on there. I think 500 degrees so I don't know, I'm not a chemist, but uh, look at that, you can just hear how good this is already going to be, right? You want to caramelize these? That's going to take a little while, you know, seriously though, you can, if you got gas and you want to make this from scratch in the morning, you need to get up. You get up before they do, you start the coffee, these onions can take like, I don't know, get right, maybe 20 minutes. You want them low, you want them slow, you have some patience. Obviously, I'm not going to put you through that whole time. We'll do some magic or TV or whatever. So we'll go over the rest of the ingredients while we're st standing here. we got some tomatillas. If y'all haven't worked with a tomatilla, it's kind of like a tomato and garlic and a lime had a baby. I don't know. They're a little sticky. They have a husk on them. They're good. They're kind of limey tasting. You can eat them raw if you want. You know, they're crunchy. They're a little sour. Damn, that's pretty good. It kind of tastes like cilantro a little bit, too. We have some eggs that I'm going to do sunny side up. I think, honestly, for me, unless you're doing like a breakfast casserole or an omelet or something, maybe a poached egg, well, still poached egg deals with the runny yolk. There's a lot of people adverse to that, and they, you know, if you're going to cook the yolk, you better be making some egg salad, man, because otherwise it's dry, it doesn't come across right. So you want sunny side up, you want to run all over everything. We've got some black beans. Um, so Rotel. We're going to have several things with Rotel in this, in this series. You know, I'm not sponsored by them, but damn, I wish I was. This is a chunky version. Um, I've got several cans over there. They have a habanero one. They have a, a Mexican one with lime and salt. They're just that fire roasted tomatoes, chipotle. I mean, the list goes on. It's really good stuff. We have some uh, queso fresco. All right. It's a... Uh, it's more of a crumbly cheese. It's not that cheese you get at the restaurant where it's all melty. That's also good. We'll feature that in another episode. I've got some chopped up jalapenos here. We've got some sliced avocado. There's some garlic that we're going to toast here in a second after these um, onions are done. So I like to season mine with cumin. So cumin may be my favorite seasoning of all time. I mean, I'm going to tell you what. I'd be hard pressed not to put that stuff on cereal. Anyway, chili powder and crushed red pepper. Now, this is good. You can't have enough crushed red pepper in your life. Let me tell you. I've got some jalapenos, like I said. We've got some sweet peppers. We're going to chop those up. This stuff, too. These people. I'm going to tell you what. If you're not making your own salsa or pico at home, that's fine. Pear dits. And this is guacamole salsa. And I'm going to tell you what. This is a game changer right here. These people got it going on. This tastes like you have... Hispanic friends that just came over to the house and made you something their grandma taught them how to do. I'm gonna tell you what, this is good. Just right, in, it's right there in the fridge when you want it. Clamato, people, you know, if you don't like, you think it clam juice and people freaking out, get some V8 or whatever, use that. We've got Tecate. So essentially, I've got the beer out here because I'm gonna deglaze the pan with a little bit of it. But you know what? You know what I really like to do is I like to have a michida. And it's not just while I'm cooking. They sell them, you can buy these in a, like a tall boy. They don't make a Tecate one. They have a Modelo one. They have a Bud Light one. Budweiser makes one that's a little spicy. But that's good. I got a little margarita salt on the rim there. You know, that's not the best beer pour, but we're not, you know, get your own ship. It'll calm down. You'll drink it, you know, have it later. I will tell you what, on the beer tip, right, if you guys get a kegerator or you go to a party or whatever and it's foamy, just let it relax. Just let it hang out. The foam's going to turn into beer. Nothing infuriates, infuriates me quite as much as seeing people take a, a whole pitcher of foam and just pour it out. 
That's wasteful. You're just ruining the beer. Just be patient. So anyway, we're going to be patient. When that sets up a little more, I'm going to add some more. I'll put some lime on there. You could even put a little hot sauce in there. In fact, while we're talking about hot sauce, in Valentina, these people also make a nice, really affordable, really tasty hot sauce. Anyway, just get these on. Look at that, man. It, it smells so good in here. I'm going to tell you. It just smells good. Um, also on my list of ingredients, I have some cilantro. Okay? Cilantro is great. Some people think it tastes weird. Some people think it's great. Maybe it's a gene. I don't know. But anyway, once the onions get done, we're going to add the... We're going to chop the peppers, we're going to add the beans, we're going to add the rotel, we're going to add all of our seasonings, and you may be doing like a tablespoon of each, I don't know. Just go crazy with it. There's some salt I'm going to put in there, maybe not a tablespoon of salt, you know, figure salt out for yourself. We're going to basically make like a little poor man's quick chili, all right? We'll have that chili happening. Our guests will be here, not on the show, but you know, if you're cooking for people, y'all can have coffee while the chili happens. And we'll take these tortillas. This is how you do one of the tortillas. You don't want to do it this early, but just for the sake of showing you why we got it going on, I just put it right on the fire. I just put it right, right there on the fire. You know, I'm not as prepared as I need to be. Let me get a pair of tongs here. You know, and you, it might catch fire and charge a little bit. You want a little bit of that charred flavor, right? You want a little bit of that. You kind of flip it around. If you set one on fire and you ruin it, just throw it away. It'll be okay. They come in a big stack of them. I mean, what are they, like a penny a piece? It's fine. You know, if you have, if you don't have gas at home, you can put that thing right on the electric eye. I've done it many times. You're not going to mess anything up. I mean, hopefully you're keeping your stove clean, right? Hopefully you are. Oh, these onions are getting there. They really are. They are getting there. All right. Oh, look at that tortilla. That's getting nice. Again, you kind of just want to warm it up and get a little char flavor on it. It's delicious. All right. You see that there? Get it, get it like that. I'll do the rest later. Y'all stay tuned, we're going to get this chili out. We've got these onions in a good state. We're going to pull them out. We're going to, and what we're going to pull them out is because I don't want to have enough to be able to just cook the garlic by itself. And, you know, I'll show you. A little bit more of that avocado oil. And that's a healthy fat. I mean, you really can't use too much of this stuff. Probably could moisturize with it, really, huh? Oh, man. So, get that up. That garlic, or sorry. The garlic, get that garlic happening, and you know, get it in there. Now, so the key to this is you want to have this garlic get golden brown. You don't want to burn it. You don't want to get little black pieces. I mean, if you get one, it's not going to be the end of the world. But if you start getting a lot of black garlic, it's going to be bitter, and then people aren't going to like that. Um, woo, that smells good, boy. That, woo, that smells good. I'm gonna tell you. All right, so we're going to get the garlic happening. And then we're going to pull the garlic out. We're going to, you know, put it in the bowl with the onions. Then I'm going to hit the pan with the black beans. We're going to season it. We're going to put the rotel in there. And then we're going to let it, you know, cook out a little bit. Let all that liquid cook out. Right? It's a chili. It's, this is not instantaneous breakfast. If you want to do this the night before, make your little topping the night before, that's a great idea. Like sauce or chili, you set it up in the fridge overnight. It's going to be better. Normally, I like to put a little meat in mine, like some leftover taco fixings, or maybe some chorizo, or even bacon. But today, I'm just gonna, you know, for the vegetarian folks, we're gonna just do it meatless. But you can just imagine the possibilities. And this is a great vehicle for leftover stuff. If you got leftover pork chop, or a little bit of leftover steak, or whatever, chicken, put it in there. You ain't, you're not gonna mess it up. All right, I'm, I'm telling you. So we pulled out our garlic, we've got our onions and our garlic already done. We've got a little more of that avocado oil in the pan. We're gonna get these, woo! We're gonna get those tomatillas going. Right? We might even just take a little lime juice. 
We might even just lime it up a little. Look at that. It's fine. It's going to taste great. Cheers. That's delicious. If you don't like tomato juice, you're not going to like that. If you like tomato juice, I'm going to tell you what. You'd be hard pressed not to have several of those while you're doing this. You know, we just stir them around. Again, leave the science to build out. This is not science. I'll say it once. I'll say it again. I might say it every episode. You can do this. Just do it. If you mess it up, I mean, you really have to catastrophically mess it up for it not to be edible. So eat it and learn from it. Stop being afraid to cook stuff, man. You'll be gonna, you're going to be fine. It's going to be fine. We have those tomatillas in there. We're going to add some peppers to it. Get them in there. Let's introduce a little salt. We haven't salted any of this yet. We're going to just put a little bit of salt on these tomatillas. Salt, you got to cook with. You know, I don't know where everybody got the high blood pressure, all this stuff. At the end of the day, man, your food's going to be bland if you don't put some salt on it. I don't adhere to a no salt lifestyle, and if it shaves a couple years off my life, well, at least I lived happy eating food that tasted good. So put some salt on that food. When you go to a restaurant and you're like, damn, this is good, it's because they're salted. All right, so these look good. We're going to hit it with the Rotel. Consistency on that. Fire up our burner again. I you showed you earlier we cooked this one tortilla. That was just for show. I mean, I wouldn't throw this away, but I wouldn't serve it. You want to cook the tortillas like right before you top them so they still have some heat to them or whatever. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to kick myself out of the kitchen for eating that one, so I'm going I'm to use that today. Also, if you don't have tortillas and you, you get yourself in this thing, use some chips. You know, we're going to do an episode on chilaquiles, but uh, that's a whole other thing, but some of y'all know. But you could just use some chips. You could just put all this on top of chips, and the chips will get soft, and they'll be delicious. You could even do this and use some chips if you want some crunch factor. Delicious. Again, not science, y'all. Just cooking. That guy's looking good. Let's get a little heat on this egg pan. Cuckoo, cachoo, right? So we get some oil in there, and again with this avocado oil, it's good for you. Butter's also good for you. Um, but you, can, I mean, you can't put too much. You can't. Okay, you can't put too much, right? Don't put a half a cup in there. But like, people like a tablespoon of oil. If you are sitting there trying to measure out oil in a tablespoon, like, stop. Just put it in there. Put the eggs on it. I like to crack my eggs into a bowl. 
Um, I can ease them into the pan, especially if you want to make sure you're doing the sunny side up egg. If you, you can like rupture it sometimes. And to be fair, I've been cracking eggs a long time. Sometimes I still get a piece of shell in there. You put it in a bowl, you get it out. You get it in the pan and you're dealing with the time. It's like, you know, who's flawless? I'm sure not. But well, we're going to get these in a pan. And I like to do two at a time. Look how happy that is. Look at it. So with these eggs, obviously we're not scrambling them. Although some scramble with cheese is pretty good. But, and you can do that. Like if your kids don't want to have to deal with, we talked about the runny yolk earlier. If you really have people that are adverse to that, with you know, all due respect, make them some scrambled. You know, put a little cheese in there and, and, and make their portion with a little scrambled. But those of y'all who know, use the runny one and just let it go all nice, you know? It's gonna be good. We talked about this. My favorite utensil in the kitchen is a rubber spatula. It's like a squeegee for the kitchen. You kind of just want to like make sure it's just just go around the edges of that egg a little bit. Right? Another trick trip you can do. Trip you can do. Trip, trip, whatever. Take a lid and just cover it. It'll take, let some of that heat steam the top of the egg, right? So by the time it's ready, now granted, we're not trying to cook those yolks, but we want that white to get cooked. But you don't want to like sacrifice the bottom of it and get it all brown. First of all, if anybody serves you an egg that has brown on it, it's not going to be as good as if it didn't have brown on it. Now you can fight me on that. Now, the edges of a fried egg to get a little brown, now that's the ticket. But like an omelet or some scrambled eggs, it's got like, no, absolutely not. I'm sending that back. I am sending that back, people. All right, so we're almost ready to serve this. We've got our plate. We've got our two tortillas. Right? That's yeah, still a little warm. Again, my kitchen towel. I do have a pot holder, but it is what it is. We're going to just like put that right on there. That's a lot, but you know, I'm kind of hungry. You could, you know, double, quadruple this recipe, whatever you want. I just used a can of beans. You know, y'all saw what I used. So, this, we just go eggs right on top of there. And then we might want to go, you know, get a little bit of that queso fresco on there. Look at that. Look how good that is. Right? Some fresh jalapeno. Top it up like that. Delicious. Some cilantro. Don't you forget that cilantro. Right? The good people at Herdez. This guacamole sauce, I'm telling you, the medium. Get the medium. Maybe just put a little bit on like that. Get a little hot sauce on the other side. You know, I mean, you know, it might not be the prettiest plate on the planet, but it look, looks pretty good to me. You can take a little lime. You just lime it up just a little bit. Just a little bit. Don't, you know, don't pour a bunch of lime juice on it. Just get it up on there a little bit, you know. Anyway, huevos rancheros, people. Looks good to me. Hope it looks good to you. Keep staying in tune. Keep staying in touch. Keep loving cooking. We'll see you next time here on Simmer and Simmons.